Greetings, everyone. Hope all of you are having an absolutely fantastic day. When the alpha version of Rogue Trader was released, one of the most consistent criticisms was that the Adept class, now called Operative, was weak compared to all the other options. Alcan heard that feedback and they changed how the mechanics work, both in an effort to make it clear what the archetype does and also to make it stronger. So did these changes pan out or is it still something you will only begrudgingly use? Let's find out. If you enjoy this breakdown, please leave a like and subscribe to the channel for more CRPG content. Operative is focused on debuffing enemies, buffing allies, and allowing you to deal more long range damage. Its characteristics are intelligence, perception, weapon skill, and ballistic skill. If you are focused on debuffing, then you are definitely going to want to invest heavily in intelligence. But when that option isn't available, you want to pump perception as high as possible to make your debuffs and damage buffs more powerful. If instead you are focused on damage, then you might want a more even distribution of characteristic points or even focus on perception a little bit more. Operative skills are awareness, medici, tech use, logic, lore imperium, and lore xenos. Tech use is essentially lock picking and is absolutely a must have. You should probably take a skill talent that bumps it up even higher. Logic comes up a ton of times throughout the game, so not having someone skilled in it will cause you to miss a lot of XP. Traps laid by aliens must be picked up with Lord Xenos, so you absolutely need somebody that specializes in it, but this character might not be the best option. Awareness and Lore Imperium are both important, but they don't use intelligence, so again, it's probably best to have another character that is in charge of them. Operator's main feature is analyze enemies. There is a passive version and one that you actually use as an ability. At the start of your turn, you inflict one stack of exploit on all enemies within your line of sight. If you hit an enemy that has an exploit, your attack will receive a percentage bonus to damage equal to five times your perception. The damage is also increased by 10% for each exploit on the target. The attack removes all of the target's exploits. That's the passive mechanic, but there's also the ability you can use in combat. This allows you to target one enemy within 10 cells and gives it a number of exploits equal to one plus half your intelligence bonus. So basically this class revolves around stacking as many exploits on enemies as possible. And then you can either remove them yourself for extra damage, or you can focus on debuffing enemies further to make it easier for your party members to damage enemies. At level three, you'll automatically pick up the ability Expose weakness. This removes all exploits from the target and imposes a percentage penalty to dodge, parry, and armor equal to 10 plus the amount of exploit stacks you removed times your perception bonus. This debuff lasts till the start of your next turn, so the entire party benefits from it and you absolutely should be using this all the time. At level 4, you get your ultimate ability, which is called Dismantling Attack. It inflicts one exploit on all enemies in combat, and you can make a free ranged or melee attack against one target that always hits. Until the end of combat, the target suffers a negative 30% penalty to dodge and a negative 30% penalty to armor. Boss Killer. This will make it significantly easier to shred a boss's defenses. There's also a Desperate Measure version of this ability that causes all your attacks to cost plus one action points until the end of combat. This honestly might not be a big deal if you are heavily focused on buffing and debuffing instead of attacking. Starting at level 9, you get two opportunities to choose from a list of four ultimate ability upgrades. Until the operative's next turn, the target cannot move and the target's movement points are reduced by three. Some bosses take great joy in roaming freely around the battlefield and picking off soft targets or navigating to an angle that allows them to hit multiple party members at one time. This upgrade definitely has its uses. Dismantling attack also cripples the enemy, reducing their weapon skill and ballistic skill by 30 until the end of combat. Personally, I don't like this because I prefer debuffs that help me kill the enemy, not limit the amount of damage the enemy can do. Dismantling attack also intimidates all enemies in a 5 cell radius around the target, reducing their dodge and armor by 15% until the end of combat. Most bosses have a ton of minions around them that you might have to carve through before really focusing fire on the boss. This is definitely an upgrade to consider. 
Finally, the target also it provokes an attack of opportunity whenever it attacks. When this is useful, it's really useful, but many bosses avoid direct confrontation with your party and instead use ranged or warp attacks to wreak havoc. Therefore, there's nobody in melee range to take advantage of an attack of opportunity. If you mostly use melee party members, then definitely pick this up, but otherwise I would skip it. Starting in level 7, you get to choose two abilities from a list of five options. Precise attack is triggered on your next attack against an enemy with an exploit and imposes a percentage penalty to cover efficiency equal to 5 plus your perception bonus times however many stacks of exploit that target has. In addition, the attack will have a percentage increase to hit chance equal to the same amount. If you are focused on damage, absolutely this will help ensure you hit your targets. Joint analysis allows allies to remove exploit stacks and consequently their attacks deal additional damage equal to your intelligence bonus until your next turn. Absolutely, if you are focused on debuffing enemies, this is a must have. Your intelligence bonus should be sky high as you progress through the game and this will really help your team. Sniping shot can be triggered while you are in cover and causes you to gain 25% cover efficiency, 15 perception, and 15 ballistic skill as long as you do not move. This effect does not stack, so you can activate it once, and as long as you don't move, it will be on the whole fight. If your character is a sniper, this ability is absolutely indispensable. Intimidation is triggered when you use a non-area attack and inflicts the status not only on that target, but also all enemies within a 5 cell radius. The damage dealt by those enemies will receive a percentage penalty equal to twice your perception bonus until your next turn. The effect is doubled if the enemy's armor has a percentage less than 3 times your intelligence bonus. Again, I prefer making enemies easier to kill, not weakening their damage, so I ignore this ability. Finally, Tactical Knowledge removes one exploit from each enemy in a 5 cell radius around a point within 10 cells from you. If there is only one enemy, then all exploit stacks are removed from that target. Your allies get a percentage bonus to armor equal to twice the amount of exploits removed until the end of combat. If four or more exploits are removed in this manner, the operative gains a bonus to damage equal to the number of exploits removed until the end of combat. Absolutely, this is an ability you should pick up if you are focused on buffing your party members. Use it in the first round of combat within the largest crowd of enemies. If you upgrade to the Grand Strategist archetype, you'll always go first and always be able to take advantage of this. Circling back to level 4, this is also when you can start selecting talents. You can choose 5 talents out of a list of 24. In the beta, one of the talents repeats twice, so it might actually be a list of 25 upon full release. The first list of talents is from your archetype, while there's a second list of talents that's general talents all of your characters are able to choose. I would strongly recommend in this screen you strictly focus on archetype talents. You get 4 opportunities to choose talents only from the general list as you level up, and that's where I would suggest you select those options. Looking at the list of archetype talents, the first one is Tide of Excellence. When you trigger an exploit on an enemy, you gain 1 damage and 2% armor penetration until the end of combat and this ability stacks. If you are focused on damage, this is a no-brainer. If you are focused on debuffing enemies, then oftentimes your party members will trigger exploits instead of you, so this isn't nearly as useful. Weak Body, Weak Soul reduces enemy toughness and willpower by 3 times your intelligence bonus for 1 round. This is a must have because you should be using exposed weakness in every fight and you want it to be as powerful as possible. Fresh target triggers when you attack an enemy with full wounds and provides a percentage bonus to the attack's damage equal to 10 plus your perception bonus. Even if you are focused on debuffing, you will still attack on a regular basis and this just clearly makes sense. Assistant analysis is triggered at the start of your turn and inflicts one exploit on an enemy for every two of your allies who have that enemy in their line of sight. This can trigger on multiple enemies and it's a fantastic way to make your exploit spread like wildfire. If you are focused on debuffing, then definitely pick it up. Instant Exposure makes Exposed Weakness cost 0 action points. Again, you are going to use this ability every fight, so this is well worth considering. It is only one action point to use though, so you may decide to hold this talent point for other options. 
Pattern recognition is triggered at the start of an enemy's turn who is affected by an exploit and causes them to inflict one exploit on a random enemy within a 3 cell radius who does not already have an exploit. At the start of combat, there will oftentimes be enemies who are outside the field of view for your party members. This ability ensures they still get an exploit stack, but I don't like it because it only works if the enemies don't already have a stack. That means it's really useful in the first round and then its effectiveness plummets. Personally, I skip this. Comprehensive analysis is triggered when you use analyze enemies on a target that has two or more exploits and gives them one additional exploit. Now, we have a limited amount of talents and I don't think this is worth it. Inflict despair is triggered when you hit an enemy that is affected by an exploit and expose weakness. It causes them to lose three movement points and their damage is reduced by 20% on their next turn. Technically, this is a great way to debuff bosses, but again, I prefer to do things that make them easier to kill, not limit their damage, so personally, this talent doesn't appeal to me. Passive learning is triggered on your first turn in combat and randomly distributes the number of exploits to enemies within a 10 cell radius equal to however many exploits analyzed enemies would inflict. At the start of each of your subsequent turns, half that amount of exploits is distributed among enemies within a 2 cell radius around you. If you are building a melee character, then this is a no brainer, but if you are working at range, then I would say it probably isn't worth it. Offensive pattern prediction imposes a percentage penalty on the amount of damage you receive from enemies with exploits equal to three times your intelligence bonus. No, either you are debuffing enemies or focused on your own damage. Limiting damage that only comes your way doesn't make sense with this archetype. Reactive study is triggered when an enemy who has an exploit and is within five cells attacks you or an ally. This enemy is then affected by an additional exploit. If you operate in melee, this is kind of something to consider, but personally, even in that situation, I don't like it. If you are at range, absolutely skip this. Informed hit is triggered when you use precise attack on an enemy affected by an amount of exploits equal to or more than 10 minus your intelligence bonus. If you score a hit, then it becomes a critical hit. This basically can confirm a critical hit every time you use precise attack, so if you are focused on damage, definitely pick this up. Combat Insight is triggered when your perception bonus is 10 or higher and allows you to gain one action point and ignore enemies damage deflection. There are multiple other classes that provide ways to increase the characteristic scores of party members. If you have those archetypes represented in your party and you decide to focus on perception instead of intelligence, this might be worth it. Personally, even if I was focusing on damage, I would skip it. Sharpshoot is triggered when you have not moved on your turn and provides a bonus to ballistic skill equal to your perception bonus and a bonus to damage equal to half your intelligence bonus for every five cells between you and your target. Obviously, if you are a sniper, this talent is a no brainer. Uncanny Sight allows you to inflict an exploit on enemies who are out of your line of sight at the start of your turn. If you are focused on debuffing, this is absolutely a talent you should consider to significantly extend your reach. A lot of enemies will start combat out of your line of sight. Ballistic Calculation is triggered when you attack a target affected by an exploit from a distance equal to farther than 15 minus your perception bonus and gives that attack a 15% damage bonus. Once again, if you are playing as a sniper, this option is an automatic yes. Insightful Precision causes Precise Attack to provide a bonus to perception equal to the number of exploits you have removed divided by 3. I haven't tested it, but I think this is missing a word and is actually supposed to increase your perception bonus, not your overall perception. If that's the case, it's something to consider if you are a sniper since you'll use Precise Attack all the time, but I would skip it because talents are limited and there are plenty of other great options. Sniper Expertise causes Sniping Spot to grant you a percent bonus to armor penetration equal to 5 plus your perception bonus against enemies that are 7 cells or further away. I would skip this because most likely you are using a sniper rifle and they get a crazy amount of armor penetration anyway so the other talents are more valuable to you. Improved Tactics causes Tactical Knowledge to require 3 exploits instead of 4 to trigger additional damage for you and the damage bonus is increased by your intelligence bonus. Most likely, if you use this on a regular basis, you are more focused on debuffing, and therefore, I would skip it. 
Joint offense causes all allies to gain a bonus to hit chance and critical hit chance equal to half your intelligence bonus when attacking targets affected by exploits. If you have allies that provide characteristic bonuses for the team, then you can pump intelligence high and this is absolutely worth picking up. Otherwise, it might make more sense for your character to wait until it's an exemplar and you already have a high intelligence score to take this. Terrifying Presence is triggered if your Intimidation ability kills its target and causes the damage of all other enemies in the Intimidation area of effect to be reduced by an additional amount equal to 4 times your Intelligence bonus. I don't use Intimidation, so this is unimpressive to me. Continuous Analysis is triggered at the start of your turn, and the enemy with the largest number of exploits received gets an additional exploit stack. If two or more enemies are tied for this amount, then the target is chosen at random. There are a bunch of high quality talents to choose from, this definitely doesn't make the cut. Assured Analysis is triggered when you are in half cover and causes analyzed enemies to cause one action point instead of two. If you are playing as a sniper and still find value in using analyzed enemies regularly, then this is something worth considering. Finally, Covert Protocol is triggered when you are in half cover and increases your cover efficiency by 15%. This bonus is doubled if you have not moved during your turn. No, as a sniper, you are focused on debuffing and lighting up enemies. Positioning and taking out high priority targets is how you defend yourself, not taking talents like this. That is all the information I have regarding Operative. Overall, I think the class is significantly better than it was in Alpha, and I enjoy using it. Let me know down in the comments if the mechanics make more sense to you, and if this seems like an archetype you will use. Hope all of you enjoyed this video. Take care!